Welcome back to another video, boys and girls. Before we dive into today's content, I just wanted to say my bad for not posting in the last week, week and a half, something like that. Um, between all the parts not showing up when they're supposed to, to all the parts showing up at once, and us just having a giant plethora of stuff to do, it's just been super sporadic and hectic around here, getting a bunch of powder coating stuff done that's actually hiding underneath all of these parts so I can keep it clean for once. Um, yeah, then the house decided it got jealous of all the work I've been doing on all the vehicles and it wanted some modifications too. So the joys of owning a hundred year old home. We'll go ahead and see what that was in a minute. But like I said, I just wanted to say my bad for not posting. Thank you guys for tuning into this one and watching. But before we dive into trying to knock out some of these just piles of parts, let's go see what went wrong with the house. So if a Sawzall and some ABS pipe is a key to you, uh, yeah, downstairs in the basement, our house was built in the 30s. The basement, obviously, is very short. I can't really walk anywhere. And there's just motorcycle stuff and LS stuff. Every, there's a little pile of heads. There's engine blocks. There's just, there's so much stuff that that's our summer project is cleaning the basement out. But as we're cleaning it, things out, we have like, this is like an old uh, oil barrel from when they had oil heating or something, I don't know. There's a bunch of old pipes, old register things. Gonna go ahead and get all these yanked out of the rafters, but uh, yeah. These wonderful cast iron pipes decided in the middle of the night, they wanted to burst and try to flood the floor. So the laundry room did not enjoy that. Uh, of course it happened at like 8.20 at night. Gail notices it doing some laundry, comes, runs to me, hey crap, we got a leak, we got to fix this. So we hastily ran to Home Depot. I'm no plumber, but some no hubs, some ABS, chopped out the crappy stuff. It was so soft in some spots that just seeing where some good pipe was, I kept poking my knife through there. So finally found some good pipe, saws it out. It's in the rafters, of course, so it ended up being an ordeal. But that's not what today's video is about. Today's video is about this wonderful pile out here and the things I've been doing off camera. So let's dive into seeing what all that is. This. This is why I'm enclosing the carport and turning this into a second garage. I'm assuming that was Duke because Duke is just an asshole, but pissed in the back of my mag wheel. Like, what is that? Why would you do, I don't know. But like I was saying, off camera, I've been messing with the dart. I've been doing body work, which is a surprise to me as much as it probably is you guys. I don't do body work and I don't know what got into me, but just started to feather in where this corner was kind of junky, which look, I'm still kind of fixing. But yeah, I even went as far as undoing the whole corner and I found some yuck in there that I'm going to have to go through and blend and weld and fix. But, yeah, I just want a nice flat quarter panel for once. So we're attempting to fix all that. That stuff's going to be a lot of off-camera work. I'm not really trying to dive into body work and paint stuff on camera yet. But what I've been fighting, I'm going to throw some clips up here of uh, gas gauge. Temperature gauge. The temperature gauge I'm not necessarily worried about. But you see in these clips, I am disassembling the gauge cluster finding a broken copper solder path and attempting to repair it to no real luck. Over the last few days, week even, I've actually been diving into attempting to get the stupid gauge cluster to function the way I need it to, and it's just, it's fighting. I've gone to the point of even deleting the stock IVR, which will come in here and we'll actually grab together. Uh, somehow ended up in my cup of coffee because having a two-year-old is wonderful, but before it ended up in my cup of coffee, Brand new classic industries, cla uh, <laughs> brand new classic industries IVR, and it they're supposed to fluctuate five volts roughly somewhere around there, um, maybe a little more. That's what keeps the gauges alive. In this case, my fluctuation was super sporadic. Sometimes I would see eight volts, which I don't think is what it was supposed to do. And if you know these classic early Mopars, if I can get this gate closed, early Mopars do not like to have more than five volts at their gauges, and they will burn out. New gas tank, new sending unit, owned all the wiring through the car, which is why this sill panel is off, so I could get to the wiring underneath it. Thankfully, I just threw it all in the back seat. But that's part of today's video. We're gonna be diving in. I did grab one of these, this is a Tobeson 
5 volt converter. It takes 12 volts in as a ground and then gives you 5 volts out. You just tie the two grounds. It's kind of hard to see with one hand. There's one black and two blacks. Just tie the two grounds together and it gives you a true 5 volts. It gave me like 4.95 at all times. So it's exactly what I'm wanting there. I need to get uh, the headlight switch installed because I did grab a new one. A bunch of little things, but before all that, I got to take the gas gauge back out. I actually have to take the entire cluster back out, which is going to be fun. Um, I think after all this diagnosis, it's actually just the gauge itself in my case that's bad. So thankfully, me being me, I did go ahead and order another one. Does this one 100% work? I don't know. It says it was tested and it was good, but the problem is, did he test it with 12 volts? I really, really hope not. I'll be so mad. But I mean, it's way cleaner than mine. Mine's all rusty and gross. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll pop the cluster out. We'll show you how to throw in this gauge. Hopefully go through quick test, see if it works, see if it fluctuates. I have like a quarter tank of gas. If I can just get some register. I don't know about you guys, but driving a car without gas gauge, no, no, I just can't. I can't run out of gas. It's so annoying. I hate that. But we have a plethora of stuff for this car. Some things that I don't want to do. Some things I do want to do. With that, let's just dive into getting this gauge cluster out and getting some work done. Average Joe build style. Crappy. After double checking to make sure the sending unit is plugged in, we got a flashlight. Let's get you guys set up down here for a second. Hopefully you can see there. Hey. <laughs> Camera's like, no, we're going away. All right, like I said, new headlight switch. Old headlight switch. Well, my headlight switch had uh, seen better days on the inside. Pretty sure it rained inside of this thing. And what's weird is, uh, see on this little pin here, no ground tank. This one has a accessory ground spot to like clip a ground, which is actually gonna be cool. It'll let me make sure I have a good ground there. But hold on, in the box is uh, maybe down here. Should have done this. Put the gauge cluster out. That would have been smarter. Okay, I can get that to all go where it needs to go. Uh, something like this. There we go. Uh, yeah. uh. Plug in. Just want to make sure real quick. It's really not the easiest thing to do. Pretty sure that's all plugged in down there. I noticed my headlight power is a little bit of a crappy plug-in. Worried about all that stuff in a minute. But I believe to set this up here like this. Theoretically. Maybe. Oh yeah, my headlights are on as soon as I plug that in. <laughs> Well, the headlights are on. That's a good sign, because I have dash lights. Sweet. So let's push. 
that in. We know that's working with it grounded, so. Uh, where are the keys, Joe? Where are the keys? Are we about to test? Let's see here. You know Let's hop in here together and adjust this. Watch that fuel gauge, guys. You tell me. Tell me, does it work? Stop running the damn microphone into the steering wheel. Uh, key in. Come on, baby. I'd be so happy if that thing flicks and goes. <laughs> of course, nothing happens. And as you see, it drops. Gauge works. Did a quick cheat sending unit wire, which like I said, I pulled out through the trunk. Gauge maxes out. And actually maxes out, so the gauge works. Now it's either my tank doesn't have a good enough ground, the sending unit is brand new out of a box and bad, which could be. If that's the case, I have over in that pile the stock tank and stock sending unit. I'm gonna pull that out off camera and I'm gonna keep it as a spare just to see. But for now, I know that stuff works, so I don't need to continue messing with it because it'll drive me crazy. I've been messing with it over the past like week and a half to the point it drove me crazy enough to start doing body work. That being said, we're gonna move on to something else that hopefully I can get accomplished and make myself feel better. Maybe post even a video, I don't know. But remember, I said something about a coolant leak. Yeah, it's one of those type of coolant leaks. So I'm gonna grab the cherry, cherry picker. I'm gonna grab the creeper. I'm gonna grab a flashlight and we're gonna slide under the car together and try and see exactly where this freeze plug is being stupid. And if I can get to it, because if I can get to it, I can fix it. That will make me want to drive the car more. If I can't fix it, then uh, I'll be a sad boy. So I don't know about you guys. I say we attempt to make me an unsad boy. Remember? It was by the oil filter. But what side was the oil filter on? Was it this side? Ah. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if I can stick you guys under here to see this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's, there's just like no way. You guys get to see that. Oh, there you go. See that freeze plug up there? Yeah. That guy, that guy needs to come out. Of course, the oil filter's right there. The exhaust is right there. The flashlight dies as soon as you touch it. Oh, yeah, this might be a fun time lapse. I do know it is dripping coolant though. So yeah, when it builds pressure, it's just going to be a, a shit show like this flashlight kill you flashlight but I don't know about you guys I say we just get up there and try and knock <laughs> can we oh oh we can see up there a little better yeah so you gotta come out easiest way I've ever found to remove freeze plugs is a punch a pair of needle nose or a pair of channel locks and a hammer hit it at an angle and get it to spin in the bore and then just pull it out. I gotta find some buckets to drain the coolant in first, but just try and drain the coolant and then I'll time lapse getting it out because it's gonna be a whole lot of cussing and screaming. So let's dive into it. 2,000 years later. Headphones in, jamming some music out because this was a nightmare. I didn't actually end up time lapsing it like I thought I was going to because let's be honest, I was under a dark car beating with a piss a pizzle. <laughs> I'm so flustered. Beating with a chisel and a flathead to get, yeah. I actually ended up knocking holes in it and then kind of deforming it. Uh, and that let me bend it, twist it, pull it out. Bop it, twist it, pull it. If it falls into the block, just fish it out with a magnet and get it back to the hole, start over. The one downside I'm noticing, even though they're the same size, this one, 
This one was a little bit thicker of a register than these ones. It's not really going to show up on camera, but uh, yeah, so I am going to end up, I'm going to go clean that surface. I'm going to lightly take a file and just try to make sure there's any rust or build up or cor what, you know, corrosion or crap cleaned up. Uh, I'm not climbing over the bikes to show you guys this. I'm going to go dig out some RTV black or gray, just something, some gasket maker silicone. silicone. I just can't English today. I'm just having one of those days. Uh, yeah, and we're gonna get that gooped up, get that guy thrown in there, try to start filling it back up with coolant, and then I'm gonna dive back into the fuel tank because I think the ground from the tank to the fuel line to the body is just not good enough. So before we end the video out, maybe we add an extra ground or something. I don't know, we'll figure that part out. For now though, let's get this thing gooped up and try and get it back into place, and I'll see you guys in a few minutes. <laughs> just junk burning off but if we zoom in right there we plug install woo well, oh let all that crap burn off I hate that flex light fan and how close it is to my brand new radiator yeah, that's a thing so that's not gonna fall the stupid gas cage is still fighting me I <laughs> I'm so annoyed I added an extra ground, I checked the power, I started it up mainly because I wanted to see if with like 14 volts to it, if it was happier than like the 12 it was getting, and I guess I jump up under there with my multimeter or something like that, but at least the car runs, at least the car drives. I need to do body work, I need to do all of the gauges and everything, I mean I got oil pressure gauge that's maxed out at 80 pounds when it's cold, I love that. At least the bottom end is good in this thing, but I don't know. I'll probably jump under and check the studs with my multimeter. I gotta switch this ground back off because it was just a temporary see if it worked type of deal. I mean, my headlight switch is hiding up under here. But if we pull it, I gotta actually put it into the cluster the way it's supposed to. There we go. Look, I have dash lights. I definitely need to add another LED to that side, but everything's working. I just don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why it's so mad at me. That gauge won't work. I don't care about that gauge. The only thing I can think of is that the actual sending unit itself is bad because I've heard of classic industry sending people junk sending units. So, I don't know. Do I go through and just pull this one out and see if it will work? I mean, it was crusty, but it might be good. I don't know. You guys leave me a comment down below. Let me know what should I do here. You think it's the gauge? You think... I, don't, I tested the gauge. I grounded it out. and it, I don't know. I'm just so flustered at this point and so frustrated. I know now that that's working I can at least throw the wiper stuff back in with the linkage that I got here now I will actually have two wipers I do have all the stuff for the four barrel swap but I said before I wanted to go ahead and put all of that 
into a video with like the two barrel versus four barrel performance. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just flustered and frustrated and this is the life of a YouTuber. Never get the parts when you need to. Get them all late. Try to do one thing. That doesn't work. Film it for, I didn't. With that, I'm gonna let you guys go. But wait, there's more. Watch it go down. Watch it go down. Fucker. How many clips am I gonna film? How long is this video gonna take? I don't know. But we now have a sending unit out of the damn car. I added a little bit of a bend that it's not gonna focus on. Come on, focus? Maybe? Kinda? Mm, no. Well, I added a little bend in the rod right there to try and adjust the reading. We're gonna go assemble it, see if it adjusts the reading, find out. Like I said, I don't know how many clips it's gonna be. 10,000? 11,000? 15,000? I don't know. Or two. Bent the arm again, a third time, the opposite way. The wife's helping me. We manually got it to go to a quarter tank, where it should roughly be fuel level wise. I checked to see where the level of the gas would be in relation to where this would roughly sit, and then I checked to see a bunch of different things. And then I bent the shit out of it to see if it would work. I'm gonna go put it together and see if it actually works, and then we'll see together. Oh shit, here we go again. Well, turns out it was the sending unit the whole time. This is the stock sending unit. It's not the same shape, not close. You'll see in the thumbnail and the picture I put up right here of me being an idiot in the living room with the wife. Yeah, it's just the sending unit is completely different shape, completely different throw, everything. But look at that. I don't know if it's there. Zoom this bitch in. Quarter tank is what it's reading almost, and I roughly have a quarter tank. Get that back, turn it off, and it slowly drops back down. We have a gas gauge. We have a running car. We have all of the bits to be a fun hot rod. We have shocks, we have gaskets, we have things everywhere, carburetor, intake manifold, but that is all time and things for a different video. With that, like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for more content, and enjoy your night, guys. I'm out of here. Average Joe Builds, catch you on the next one. Yeah.